the kids had a tail of two cities. I've got a tail of two navies. One very well, very large. Well, still reasonably large. Might be perhaps better. A navy that was once famed in Solomon's story and still is, and was once considered one of the premier navies in the world. That being the Royal Navy, and a much smaller and more um, newer navy, which is the Irish Navy. Let's do some of that wonderful sharing with that wonderful, great program, Zoom. You can tell I'm getting tired of Zoom, can't you? Um, here's a news article from the Irish Times. New naval service flagship to cost an estimated 300 million euros. Yes, this is great. But who's going to sail it? Are you going to put teddy bears on here? Um, there's a You have, at the moment, and I'll be showing you the figures for it, uh, the amount of people in the naval service and people will be dying laughing, I assure you. I'm not going to laugh at the sailors. They're doing their job. They're decent guys, all working hard at jobs that are quite risky and unpleasant and I couldn't do in a million years. But they are planning on looking at buying a multi-role vessel, which is modelled on a vessel. Um, if I remember, it, oh yes, here we go. Modelled on the... Uh, the uh, our own Netherlands um, Navy flagship. This is can carry up to 300 troops. And let me have a look up and see how many sailors it takes to operate that thing. I'm sure it's not exactly three, three or something. Carl Dorman. I'm sure it's going to take quite a few people to operate a ship that size. It's named after this Admiral, so let's ignore him for a minute. Since, uh, no offence to Carol, but we're not particularly interested in him right now. Here's the ship itself. The ship itself takes, let's go down there, ignoring all that fit uh, fit and finish on that. Uh, let's see, there's uh, 150 crew. The Irish Navy has never run a ship that required 150 crew or could accommodate... 150 non-enlisted persons, like helicopter crews, uh, medical terms. The largest thing they ever ran was the the, the ex-flagship LA Ethna, which was 90 people. They couldn't run that now because they don't have enough people. And you'll see why in a minute. Here's the Irish Naval Service Wikipedia page. And this is, that's as of April 23, the... Um, the, the current active personnel are 764. Oh, wow. <laughs> they have eight ships. They had nine at once, which was actually about as big as it's ever got. They were actually slowly expanding. They, they now have 764 people. Basically, you could imagine London with two taxis, and you'd be about in the, in the um, sort of in that goal. They now have six ships because they had to re tire some of them and they put four in reserve so basically who will run this ship if you buy it you will have to attract hundreds of personnel and enlarge the navy vastly are you just going to stick it in a corner to rust meanwhile with another navy the british navy which is much bigger of course the royal navy failing to get enough recruits into basic training between July 22 and July 23, the already understrength Royal Navy workforce shrank by 4.1%. 1,640 more people left than were recruited, which is quite funny because that's <laughs> realistically over twice as many people left as are in the Irish Navy, which gives you an idea of the disparity of size in the navies. Um the British Navy is something around thirty-two to 33,000 people still. It's a sight bigger, even if it is shrinking. Uh, I would have thought defence of coastline and upkeep of it was, was actually a worthwhile goal of governments. But the Irish government seems, it seems to find it impossible to attract anyone to join the Navy. You would have thought with only 764 people, well, what's the point? It's it's not even an enhanced Coast Guard anymore. Here we go. Short on skilled sailors, Irish Navy hires recruiter for global search. The US Navy may have its share fair of recruiting problems, but those pale in comparison to the challenges facing the Irish Naval Service. 
Ireland's Navy has a chronic shortage of skilled personnel, practically engineering. Oh, yes, it does. And you can see it, by the way, if you go to um, the Irish Defence Forces Facebook pages where you're constantly hammered with like, um, oh, please join us, please join us, please join us. I suspect at some point they'll be asking pensioners who are sufficiently qualified would they like to join. It's getting that bad. Um, the service has selected Galway-based flagship maritime consultants to head up a global recruitment campaign, according to the paper. The goal is to hire in more marine engineers, radio officers, electricians, and other experienced personnel. But the problem is these people can do better in the private market, so they're not really likely to. Uh, like the UK Royal Navy, the civilian maritime sector on the shore side labour market is red hot in Ireland. With that more personnel, Ireland will have more days without a naval person on sea. So it, it had 39 days when this was written. Basically, this is why Ireland has been perceived increasingly as a country if you want to smuggle some drugs, Ireland is your man. Because there's nothing patrolling there. You have two ships at once. Basically, look at the size of Ireland's coastline and and the uh, is economic zone on a map. You'll realise it's unlikely you'll get caught. Yes, you see stuff appearing in the news where they get caught, but this probably represents a small fraction of what's actually going through the zone. It's very unfortunate, and for several years, they'd actually managed to build up the naval service and start making it into a credible force, where it actually had a reasonable number of ships. It was beginning to look like a serious proposition, and now it's crumbled again, mainly because the Irish government has never, ever really considered defence to be a serious proposition, because they've always figured that if the worst comes to the worst, Britain is sitting across the water, and we'll pick up the you know, the, the bill and do it for them. That, in my opinion, has always been a major failing in the Irish government and it's excessively lazy.